as we were discussing during our last interaction that covid has a lot of impact on all over the world as well as the industries we also thought which are the sectors which are the areas which will be having the next course of development action a future further to move with the one factor or one industry which was undoubtedly moving further was the data center with current scenario a lot of operations are going on digital or with media business meetings schoolings interactions everything is going on social media with video conferencing that also increases requirement of data centers data is a key when we talk about data centers the two factors come into picture one is a cheap land and second availability of infrastructure in terms of power and it network we are associated with sudlots i am working on some projects in india today we are having mr john ripingal who is heading the operations of sudlots in dubai in the gcc and in africa and asian continents john is having about 12 years of experience uh, he is electrical engineer by profession and has been handling data center for last 12 years he has complete round experience of handling data centers uh, he started as uh, expert in ups and generator from there he started getting associated with data center projects in uk uh, right from design execution testing commissioning and overall operations is what he has gone through during its last 12 years of data center experience for last 6 years he is with sudlots and he was a key person or say the lone person who started the operations of sudlots in gcc market and recently they have expanded their operations in india so we will discuss about the whole data centers what are the challenges the data centers are facing today what is the future what is the difference between uh, the data center requirement in gcc in uk or europe or in india so i would like to uh, thank john and uh, welcome him for the discussions thank you sajjan for the warm welcome okay so john uh, with your 12 years of experience in data centers uh, you started your career back in uh, uk mm -hmm. and now you are starting the whole operations in gcc as well as in india how do you find the requirement of data centers uh, vary in this part of the world with respect to you know okay well from a project perspective the projects we work on there's a lot of similarities and that's mainly driven by the end user demand uh, we primarily work with co-location clients and their demand comes from the end users the hyperscalers so in terms of global standards and practices these are quite common across both europe uh, middle east africa and india also uh, the main difference we see is with the size of the facilities so typically in gcc facilities range from around 2 to 5 megawatt of size and that's predominantly due to the size of the population and demand here whereas in the india the, the sizes of property uh, projects that we're doing is around 20 megawatt minimum so compared to europe europe's around 10 to 20 also so there's a lot of similarities of size and scale between europe and india USA is around sort of 100 megawatt size facilities. Now we are talking with some clients in India of 60 megawatt facilities. So we are getting there and the growth predictions for India there will be the hyperscale facilities of that kind deployed within the next 4 to 5 years. Yeah, and in India being the uh, technological market it's highly competitive. Mm -hmm. To talk about the engineering people go to the deep root of engineering and try to optimize I will say a, a, a piece of it or a fill of it. <laughs> uh, that also puts a lot of pressure on the engineering consultancy. Data centers is our new uh, association, but then when we talk about the building services, uh, 
they they expect a lot as as what we do in gcc or in african countries what we do we uh, deserve much more in india as a consultant uh, when we talk about the sizing of the equipment the, the detailing on the drawings uh, generally the pattern in in uh, gcc is we are main consultants and then we have a contractors on board and the detailed drawings are developed by the contractors but in india right from the design drawings the specifications the preparing packages uh, uh, selection of equipment for that matter at times developing the detailed drawings is a requirement by a client uh, as, as a consultant what is your experience about that so without a doubt, and I say it politely, the expectations on the consultants in India are probably some of the greatest that we've seen compared to GCC and Europe. Um, typically on projects we're familiar with here in GCC, the project structure is quite defined. There will be a general contractor, there will be a cost consultant, a technical advisor, a uh, project management consultant. So this would form part of the project team, whereas in India they are very cost competitive and the projects are run on a very lean basis. It's a very competitive market there, as I'm sure you're familiar with. So it's really stripped back on terms of the project delivery and the end, the end client, the user, will actually carry out the role of the GC themselves and sublet many of the packages. This puts additional pressure on their own projects team, but ultimately their projects team look to, the, to us as the consultant to carry out a number of these roles and be the key driver behind the project delivery in terms of um, technical compliance, optimizing efficiency, optimizing costs, and ensuring that the quality is there throughout the project. So typically as a design consultant, the project for us might finish once the design we've completed, and then there may be a number of visits throughout the project. But in the Indian market, we're involved right from the early concept all the way through to handover even then, when the facility is operated, the clients will still say, can you advise on this? We're having an issue here with this system, with that system. How can we improve it? How can we do it better? So it's more of a partnership and long-term engagement. The job continues well beyond the contract piece. <laughs> um, but it's good to be so involved with the clients and where the client places is so much trust on you, which makes it very important that we have the right people on board and all of our engineers are you know, data center experts in the field. Yeah. Uh, one is data center and parallelly the second aspect comes as a, the supporting building services. Mm -hmm. uh, as we all know, the key factor in evaluating the performance of data centers is PUE, that is power usage effectiveness. That's correct. Uh, when we talk about that, we are supposed to minimize the extra power usage which is required by the building services. Uh, and key factor goes as the air conditioning. Yes, the air conditioning probably is the biggest factor of any data center of energy usage, especially in warmer climates here within GCC and India. Um, India's Mumbai summers get up to 40 degrees, if not, if not hotter, um, some occasions. So it's very, it's a challenge to drive down those PUEs. Um, what we really need to do is look at how we can increase the temperatures inside the data center, work within ASHRAE allowable, not just the recommended, um, but that all comes down to the end user's acceptance. Um, we've worked with some larger customers here who actually allow up to 33 degrees for a certain time in the year, which is really forward thinking because that reduces the reliance on mechanical cooling, reducing energy consumption, meaning you're sizing your MDBs, generators, all smaller because it's only during the peak summer where you're experiencing the highest energy the peak PUE. We have to design the whole systems to, cap, to counter for those you know, one or two months of the year, or well, sometimes even the, it's only a day or two, but we still have to oversize the whole facility. So if we can reduce that, it's going to reduce the capex, it's going to reduce the opex, and it's still going to provide a facility that is within operating parameters for the equipment inside it. Yeah, and in the current scenario, uh, one of the aspects which uh, consistently has started adopting and taking further is the sustainability. Mm -hmm. When you talk about sustainability, it talks both about, about uh, environment as well as on the economy side. Uh, the third aspect is the social aspect. But then when you are trying to hit the balance in our ongoing projects, we were just thinking further how can we apply to data centers also. So during that, 
when we did the uh, studies and uh, started doing the brainstorming, uh, there are various standards which are available, uh, which we talk about. Uh, apart from PUE, uh, there is the ASHRAE 90.4, mm-hmm. which is basically performance-based standards, uh, where it uh, talks uh, not only for the uh, the uh, full load data center, but it talks about the uh, power consumptions at part load, that is 25%, 50%, 75%, 100%. 100%. As we all know, for the air conditioning, when we go on part load, the efficiency increases. Mm-hmm. So, uh, the, I mean, when we talk about air conditioning parameters and selection of chillers, we don't uh, specify only the uh, IKW per turn and the P. We also talk about IPLP requirements, which we use a much better performance. We are talking about EER or we are talking about SEER, yeah. which is seasonal energy efficiency mm-hmm. ratios. So, all these parameters we can see that uh, has been brought into 90.4 which is a very robust uh, model for evaluating the performance of a data center as a whole, not only uh, at a peak load. And uh, with our in-house modelers, etc., we have been trying to uh, adapt to the requirements and uh, uh, see that how how the designs can be better uh, to cater with current uh, requirements. It's not only uh, need of an hour, Adoption of these things is required for the survival of the entities because the market is so uh, co- cost conscious in India. Um, I think uh, John will be able to give more de- inputs on that. That what cost goes for the data in in this part of the world versus in India. Yeah. So the the telco industry in India has revolutionised cheap data and free phone calls um, and that's really been driving demand for online services in India that coupled with cheaper smartphones entering the market connectivity in more rural areas I mean the population of India is 1.38 billion last time I checked which is a close second to China's 1.43 so it's very quickly will become the biggest population on on the planet which accounts for around 18 percent so this combination of the, ch- the cheap data, which, for instance, my my annual contracts in India is it's around a hundred and sort of it's around a hundred dollars, and that gives me um, forty gigabytes of data, free four uh, G calls throughout the year. Compared to in the GCC, where my contract monthly is probably around one hundred and sixty dollars, so there's a quite a, a huge that's per month. So there's quite a huge delta there. So. The cheap online services has fueled you know, demand for online gaming, social media platforms, and just connectivity. So being able to speak to relatives across the country, uh, keep in contact with friends who are working overseas. Most people I found in India, they have two smartphones. Yep. And that that's from the businessman working for a company like Sony in the central offices to the guy who's by the side of the road selling vegetables, he's even got two smartphones. I've only got one smartphone, but these guys have two, some three, I'm sure. And they're having multiple conversations at the same time. All of this is going through the data center, pushing demand for services and bandwidth, yeah. Uh, when you talk about infrastructure of India uh, for the data centers, now the new concept is also moving further as a cloud-based centers. So it's not only uh, the data is at one place, uh, it's mapped at multiple locations so that uh, the discontinuity uh, is avoided in case of any mishap happens at the mm-hmm. facility. So uh, how does the whole uh, picture of cloud-based data centers going to affect? I was just going through the articles of uh, Uptime and uh, uh, they are mentioning that a lot of co-location data centers, the demands are getting on the lower side and because of that, uh, people, as people are shifting from the uh, data center to the cloud based, uh, the optimal loading on the data center is not there. As we are having that uh, lower than optimal loading, the PUEs are going up. So these are all cascading effects of the uh, cloud based systems. So how these challenge, challenges will be addressed in in near future? So. Yeah, typically data centers, if we design a 10 megawatt facility, IT load, it can take several years, three to five years to actually reach anywhere near that load. Um, Even with facilities that are mature and have been full of customers, they will rarely reach their, they may reach 60 or 70%. 
So it really comes down to optimizing um, the systems within it, mainly around the cooling systems to see what can be tweaked as an operational side to get more efficiency from your systems. So considering shutting down some systems which are not being used, but then like you said rightfully, modern equipment is better at part load. So we, you know, modern cry units, Pahus, we run them full, we run all of the units on the fan on the part load and you get a very good efficiency benefit. That all comes down to the operations team though. In the first six months, they need to get confidence of the facility, its operations. Um, as the equipment is new, customers are moving in and out, they would much rather run on a safe side and keep the data center slightly cooler than it needs to be while they gain trust in the new chiller, the new generators, UPSs, and the team are also new. But once they've got this confidence over six to 12 months, they should be putting in, along with their preventative maintenance, they should be putting in efficiency metrics, looking at increasing temperature set points, not drastically, but half a degree, monitor it, monitor it during summer, slowly increasing the temperature will have a big benefit on the efficiency. Um, Depending on how you calculate it, I think every, every degree or two increase in the, in the data center white space can actually save 0.1 off your PUE um, because of the less demand on the chillers and the rest of the infrastructure. We are discussing about data centers. We discussed about the operation requirement. In our future series or future episode, we would like to discuss about what are the challenges data center is facing and what are the mediation measures. Thank you.